Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes by C.N. Sanders SP. Oh, wait, no, that's somebody else. Forget that name. I am C. Nelson SP. Ooh, we got a control panel. And it does nothing. Button press. Press. Press the buttons, damn you, snake. Why you do nothing? But now, let us press on and enter the room of doom and sadness. Uh, oh my god, I, I just realized. <laughs> there are a lot of segments in this uh, that when I was doing this on Expert that I had to rehearse a lot because they're fucking hard. This is the one I had to do the Be most. Be careful. You absolutely must not use weapons in that area. Lies. I've already programmed the nano machine so that he won't be able to, Colonel. What? What are you talking about? Have you forgotten? That's where they keep the nuclear warheads. Can't you see them? Yeah. There's lots of boxes piled up in here, but are they all warheads? Yes, they're all dismantled warheads. They just leave them here? It's like President Baker said. Totally careless. What are they going to do with them? They're working on a limited budget. They try to put on a pretty face for the media, but this is the grim reality of it. Nastasha knows lots more about it than I do. Her frequency is 141.52. All of the warheads in those boxes have had their detonation mechanisms removed, so there's no fear of them exploding. But if the warheads are broken, they might leak plutonium, and that would be a serious problem. Snake, never use your weapon on that floor. I'm pretty sure Kojima uh, got a bit of uh, new information, because later on, uh, when this section was remade for another game, uh, that. What the? Is there somebody there? Damn it! I can't remember much from here. So. I believe the camera just above me. Huh? Fuck! Damn it! Snake. What happened? Snake! Snake! Alright, there was something I didn't cover, and uh, that was the, um, all the people on your support team. Once all, uh, once all of them have been introduced, I'll go through all of them except for Deep Throat, because Deep Throat will have his own segment at the end, or near the end. Fuck! Crap, I hate it when I go too very fast. Yet. What the hell? How does he keep seeing me? Snake, are you okay? Snake! Snake! What the fuck? Is he hearing my footsteps or something? I guess I gotta wait until he's looking away. But come on. Fucking hell. Alright, let me see if I if my old strategy works. So. Fuck! Oh, that's what happens. That They can hear me walking, that's why. Shit, this is gonna be fail-tacular because, uh, this part... Ah, oh, man, this part... It, it, it eats away at your very soul until there's nothing left. That's what happened to me. That's why I must cut through hype. God, that sounded weird. See, I can't remember. Does he come down? Oh yeah, he does. Shit. Shit, does he see me? I'll know in a second. Fuck, he does. Snake, answer me! Snake! Snake! Alright, this is what I hate about a lot of stealth games, that unless you absolutely memorize everybody's, like, uh, patterns, it's, it's kind of a trial and error game. What 
Oh shit. Snake, answer that was me. weird though. Snake. Normally when they dull down, that kind of means you're you're on a level that's different from them, but uh, for some reason that comes up when you're crawling too. And in case you say anything, they also got rid of my M9. Even though in a nine millimeter uh even though a nine millimeter tranquilizer round would there, there's no way in hell a nine millimeter, tra millimeter tranquilizer round would have any kind of uh, ability to, you know, break a fucking nuclear warhead of all things. Let's see if my trial and error will work here. Fuck! It doesn't. Shit. Snake, answer me. Snake. Snake! Hell, we're off to a wonderful start, aren't we? Is there somebody there? Seriously, are you kidding me? How the fuck did he see me? Oh no, I, I guess a better word would be, how did he glimpse me? Fuck. Ah, damn it. Oh shit, he's on his way back. Alright. Hurry up. I remember when I was, uh... Oh, shit. Come on. Yes! Alright, finally! Woo! I did that. Yeah. And as you can see, my skill has greatly deteriorated over the, the uh, past couple of years. Let's see. Ladies' restroom. I believe something that became kind of infamous was that I think I was, like, Constantly, uh, uh, just, um, fuck it. Wait, uh, what I find it? Oh, no, they, it stopped. Um, something that I found constantly hilarious is that I would always knock this dude out. But that's because, uh, when you're really moving around, in general, you just do not want, uh, distractions to come up. And, oh, wait, I forgot. Uh, I think there's porn in these places. Yes, there is. More porn! Snake demands it. Why do you think he called himself that? Why, why do you think he has the name Solid Snake? God, that joke was so obvious. Fuck! Well, he didn't see me. That was because he felt a needle. Alright. Is it on both sides? Alright. I'm actually killing less people in this run than I did in my original. In the original, I think I killed like everybody once I got the silencer. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, originally there were like no things that you could open. Like this was all just out in the open for whatever reason. Well, actually, yeah, a lot of it was just out in the open right now anyway. Uh, but yeah, we got a weapon there called the Nikita. Whether it was named after Khrushchev, I don't know. Oh wait, no, it, was that was it Nikita Khrushchev? Or I, God, there's somebody, historian-wise, who's just pissed off right, right now, isn't they? Well, all right, basement two. All right, there's no guards. But, if we look over here... <gasps> oh, wow. That was dry. But we've also look over here. We'll find danger. Danger, danger! Uh, but now, we must open this room into the room of sadness and despair. You know, for a room that has a lot of poisonous gas, Snake is pretty damn calm.
I actually really liked that. I thought that was cool. A little in your face, but I thought it was cool. Snake, watch out. That place is filled with gas. Also, the floor is electrified. Oh First, yeah, I didn't destroy notice. the high voltage switch. It's the switchboard on the northwest wall. But how? I can't reach it. Use a remote controlled missile. Now, what anyone who knows anything about electricity would know is that your best bet is to cut off its uh, source. Now, he could destroy it, or he could do something as simple as cutting the cords that are right here. But of course, Snake is not a smart man. So instead, he must blow things up, as per usual. God, people, um, they shitted on me for doing so badly at this. Uh, but I think it was because I was really impatient in this segment. Uh, and uh, here's the thing. He said, blow up the switchboard. Problem is, on the way to the switchboard, there's like 50 cameras that also have turrets. Now, how turrets, uh, and how that works is I don't know. Alright, did I get it? I don't think I did, actually. Because if you think about it, how does a turret know how to distinguish a, uh, any moving target at all. Like, someone could be in the camera room and saying, holy crap, there's a, there is a, an intruder. But what about these guys? But what about these? Are there people behind the cameras in, like, the operating room with, like, a joystick and a uh, fucking... Uh, uh, yeah, with a, pretty much just a joystick controlling all these cameras and aiming it at everybody. Who knows, maybe this was the engineer's first job. Maybe that's how he ultimately came up with the idea for that pointy thing. Uh, that, that laser thing that lets him control his sentries. He loves that little thing. What? Why you no blow up? What? Oh, sh oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That was fucking close. God, I'm doing pretty good. But, uh, I think. Oh, God, I'm gonna start doing terribly now, aren't I? Come on. What? You son of a bitch. Ah, fuck it. Let me see if I can just pass him. Um, remember, I believe I said earlier that, uh, in the water you can hold your breath by tapping the hell out of the Y button? Well, you can do that now, actually. Uh, oh, awesome, it blew up. Uh, in the poisonous gas, like, this is the normal rate. Tapping the hell out of the Y button, it slows down crazily. Uh, uh, presumably, it's by the same system of simply snake holding his breath. And then putting an intense amount of pressure into his chest! <sighs> so, yeah. Um, I remember before in Metal Gear Solid 1, in the original version, like, you'd be kind of strapped for time for kind of a stupid reason uh, in this area. Now, okay, here's the thing. That should not have happened. What, uh, what happened, like the, uh, the, the electricity kind of went down the line and then blew up here. What should have happened is that, uh, well, <clears throat> actually it pretty much just should have stopped. If electricity stopped pumping, uh, the thing is, there shouldn't have been anything like that reaction that happened where just electricity shot back. Because electricity really wouldn't do that. Even if the circuits would say overloaded, what would more what would be uh, what would probably happen is just that there would be one section that just would break. And then that's it. Why don't you fucking break? Fucking Damn it. What the hell? All right, finally, but... Oh, fuck, I'm low on air. Must tap. Why, but... Fuck, I lost some health. But yeah, uh, even if a, if a source of power is lost, that does not... Uh, the thing is, when you lose power, you pretty much lose... All right, I found a gas mask, and that'll be very helpful. It'll reduce the speed greatly. Um, but when you lose power, electricity is not going to all of a sudden shoot out of a, something that has no potential energy anymore. Pretty much what should have happened is that it just all should have just stopped. 
But then again, what do I know? I'm only an electrical engineer in training. <clears throat> anyway, now that now that everything is slowed down, uh, thanks to this gas mask, we can move quickly. Now, I said before that you were kind of rushing in Metal Gear Solid 1, and that's because of a one simple detail. You no longer need to go up to a car, uh, you need, no longer need to go up to a door and select your card. Now it does it automatically. In the original game, you would have to constantly switch out from your gas mask to your other things. So, oh, I forgot about this. Alright, I better get acting more health so I can avoid fucking up too bad. So, yeah. Alright, I, I like I actually like the way Snake looks in this gas mask though, mask, though. It actually really fits with the rest of his outfit. Somebody pointed out to me that what's the point of Snake's crotch harness? Like, if you can see it, it's around his ass now, but it's like... The thing is... Uh, the reason most outfits have this is uh, for parachuting, but Snake doesn't have it, so it's actually a pointless addition. Love this song. It's not a great listen to song, but really just adds a lot of character. And oh my god, this next scene! Oh, this next scene is fucking awesome. Actually, I want to see. Does the gas mask go into cutscenes? Let's find out. No, it doesn't. I know the body armor does, though. <laughs> but of course, the uh, the problem with this scene is that in the new system where the key cards auto open automatically, it doesn't make sense why it's not opening now. Ah! Hi. But yeah, this this scene is both scary and awesome. <laughs> First example of blood actually sticking. Take this. No, you. God, that little piano. I wish. I wish more people knew about that one because that was cool. Originally, this is just how Snake found it, just like the body's lying, but I like this version better. Okay, he really should have gone. Well, it depends on what's in the way. It's... it's a ghost. Shit. Damn, the dude was alive the entire time. That sucks. Wouldn't it have been much smarter to activate yourself before cutting open the door? But anyway, yeah, that was a fucking cool scene. Oh. Yeah, there are some like gaff marks on them all over the place, but uh, and actually no, this is probably like the most brutal thing you can actually see in cutscene, or no, in game. There are some more brutal moments later on, but yeah, blood. But I think that the blood at here looks too dry. Like when you get shot and the blood smears all over the walls, I think that looks a little better. Uh, but anyway, got an up upcoming boss fight, and this one I believe also kicked my ass to no end, and it probably will again, because I do not have, did not find any more rations, so I'm fucked. So who were the, all those people guarding? This guy. Stealth camouflage? Who are you? 
That doesn't answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> Need to lay off the water. Where is my friend? What? What are you talking about? It should have gone a little. The one what that next? went down should have gone a little higher, and the one that went that stayed straight should have actually gone a little um. Actually, no, that depends on how the edge of the blade is. Waiting for you, snake. Physics! Who are you? Oh, Rob Paulson. Your friend. I am back from a world where such words are meaningless. Remember when I said that I there was somebody no who obstacles. played two now roles? You and I will battle to the death. This was the other what role he want? played. Oh, I've waited a long time for this day. Now I want to enjoy this moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's with these guys? It's like one of my Japanese animes. Those Come Japanese weirdos. With you. What is it? Revenge. If it was really a Japanese anime, there'd be way more tentacles. It is nothing so trivial as revenge. And that doesn't happen until a the fourth game. Death with you. Actually, no. Only in, that can my soul find respite. in some sense, there were actually tentacles in the second you, game. Or you will kill me. <laughs> I'm amazed he didn't do that at first when he saw the giant ninja wielding a sword. Uh, all right, well, that's not really a giant. Watch from your box seat. I need that man. Keep your hands off him. That was weirdly worded. Now, make me feel it. Make me feel alive again. No disrespect to Greg either. And I may cover this later, but I actually really like this dude's voice. Now, the key point to this match is not to have any weapons selected, or else he will fuck you up. <coughs> fuck. But he'll fuck you up anyway. God damn it. And the problem is, uh, all your enemies get hit stun. Oh, that poster on the left side. It's actually from a PS2 game being made at pretty much at the same time. Zone of the Enders. Oh wait, no, actually it was released in 2001, never mind. Originally there was a police knots poster there. If I'm not mistaken. A game which uh, is apparently very close to uh, Kojima, but I swear he, 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 he like plugs it a bajillion times. Uh, someone made the argument why uh, why uh, why advertise a uh, a PS2 game in a GameCube title, uh, but I think it's pretty much that uh, I think he kind of assumed that hey, hey, if you can recognize it, you will, you know, some exposure is better than nothing. Because from what I heard, uh, Zone of the Enders didn't do that well in sales. Like I remember trying to buy a used copy at fuck at GameStop. Um. And the thing was fucking expensive. Or was that the second game? I can't remember. I've heard that, uh... Shit! Damn it. Snake has huge recovery frames on his... Why am I using fighting game logic for... Damn it. On his attack, so... But what the hell? What the fuck? The attacks aren't hitting. Damn it! God, I hate this fight in both games. It's fucking annoying. Damn it. Shit. Snake, answer me. Snake. <sighs> Snake. Oh god, I'm gonna have to start editing this, aren't I? Oh, what the fuck? Ah, fucking hell. Good. Now we can fight his warriors. Seriously, I fucking hate how every time you hit them, they kind of get pushed back like a foot or something. So you'll almost always hit the third, uh, miss the third strike. A lot of times I just like to... Ah, fuck. But that lunging attack he has... 
such bullshit. No! Fuck! I understand why they put the the spin strike in the game, but if you're gonna have it in there, at least make it do extra damage. Fuck! And really, Snake's awkward. What the fuck? Snake's awkward roundhouse kick in the first one uh, didn't add much, but at least it was kind of fast. So yeah, I gotta jab him to death. Fuck! No. Why you hacks? Ah, shit. Oh, cool, he glitched. What the fuck? What the hell? Damn it. God. God, a big weakness of both this game and the original is that their boss battles are fucking clunky as hell. Although, in retrospect, that really can be said about pretty much all the Metal Gear games. And, oh my god, the TV switching to, this, to a different signal. Fuck, I gotta pause this. Alright, um, I auto-tuned my direct TV. I think I mentioned something similar to this. To watch do Ra Ra Ra. And the fucking... <laughs> it went on. I didn't realize what time it was. Fuck. Oh no, it's gonna cost me, isn't it? What the fuck? I didn't even have a chance. That is such cheap bullshit. Fuck. Fuck you, DirecTV. You caused me to die. I remember mailing was hilarious in the first game. Not intentionally, of course. Her accent was just hilarious. The way they made her use it. Get up, snake! Racism. Ah, no, oh, I missed. Ah, shit. Good. Now we can fight as warriors. I've always wondered, how would they make a Konami fighting game? Konami has a really shitty history of fighting games, if I'm not mistaken. Why, how many have they actually made? Uh, did they make Double Dragon 5? I can't remember. Or was that somebody else? I can't remember who made Double Dragon. Alright. Still, a non-history in fighting games isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, Square, from what I understand, um, made like a Final Fantasy fighting game and it was actually, from what I heard, it was actually pretty good and the only history they have in fighting games is to ball. I haven't heard how well that did though. Oh no, I think there's like two more games. Oh shit, he hit me with a regular combo? Fuck, why did the third hit the strike? What the fuck? It happened again! Oh shit! Ah, oh, damn it. It's not hitting for some reason. Oh, come on! Ah, damn it! Why aren't you hitting the third strike? That's cool, Snake. Beats the beats, the beats, beats the beats, the beats, beats the beats, the beats, beats in my head. God, I wonder how many people will wonder, will figure out how I made that, that fucking jump. Oh. Ah, damn it! Will the audio glitch? No, it actually came up. For some reason, when I recorded it a really long time ago, it would almost consistently glitch at that point. I, I have no idea why. I think this is where he teleports. 
Yeah, and this is like the safest place because you can. There's only two places you can teleport to behind and in front of you. He has a pretty good mix up teleport game. Yeah, it's not always going. I think there's just a point where you can't press the button. Or I'm jamming my button by pressing it way too much. So yeah, I just keep this up. Break the game more! Oh, that was a pretty good teleport mix-up game. That's good Hurt me more. Hurt me more, dog. And finally, we're done with the boss fight. The scene doesn't make much sense for how the character can teleport, but I still like it. And I also like that they actually made an effort to make Snake look a little more superhuman. Because it kind of makes him, like, it makes him seem more special in my opinion. Awesome oh, face. A lot of the rest of the stuff was really, you can tell it was kind of based on some sort of combat, but that came with the fuck out of left field. Then again, I'm, uh, this is a cyborg fight with a ninja. I felt that snake. Do you remember me now? It can't be. You were killed in Zanzibar. Oh no, all of my hacked computer games. 2005, uh, oh no, I can no longer play Resident Evil 4. Oh, that wasn't on the PC anyway. What's happening? Oh, but he has a GameCube. they actually gave him Terminator vision. Uh, is it over? Rebooting. Now trying to load up Windows Vista. God, this joke is going to be old. Damn, that was a good scream. That was a pretty awesome. Yeah. Game. See, that's why I like this new actor. Gray Fox. Colonel, that ninja is Gray Fox. No doubt about it. Ridiculous. You yourself in Zanzibar land. Yes. He should have been killed, but he's still alive. What? It happened before I joined Foxhound's medical staff. They were using a soldier for their gene therapy experiments. I never heard that. It happened right after you retired. My predecessor, Dr. Clark, was in charge. Dr. Clark? Yes. He started the gene therapy project. Error. And where is he now? Error. He was killed in an explosion in his lab two years ago. Another so error. What about this soldier? Apparently, for their test subject, they decided to use the body of a soldier who was recovered after the fall of Zanzibar land. You know, instead of anybody else. Fox. But he was already dead. Yes. But they revived him. It's that they simple. fitted him with a prototype exoskeleton and kept him drugged for four years while they experimented on him like a plaything. I think Today's it'd just be easier to find a bunch of alive people and just pay them to shut That's up. That's the sickest thing I've ever heard. 
They used him to test all sorts of gene therapy techniques. Naomi, why didn't you tell us about this sooner? Because it's confidential information. Is that the only reason? In Naomi, what happened to Gray Fox after that? The record said he died in an accident. I see. But even if that ninja is Gray Fox, the question is, why? From what I could tell, he didn't know who he was. You're saying he's just living off his will to fight? I'm not sure, but he seems intent on fighting me to the death. We'll meet again. I know it. So you'll we're, fight we're, again? We're. Until you kill him? Mm -hmm. I'd rather not. But maybe that's what he wants. Nintendo GameCube and a pretty sweet wave bird controller. Those things are fucking expensive and hard to find. How long are you gonna stay in there? Huh? Are you one of them? No, I'm not. I always work alone. Alone? Are you an otaku too? <laughs> Come on, get out. We can't stay here forever. You look like a guy out of Neon Genesis Evangelion! Your uniform's different from theirs. You're the Metal Gear Rex chief engineer, Hal Emmerich, right? And with Hal Emmerich introduced, I will now you briefly do something me? very quickly! Let's go! Ooh, prepare for the long haul on this one, because this is going to be a big one. First up is Colonel Campbell or Roy Campbell. Roy Campbell apparently served in the United States Marine Corps, mainly as one of its truck drivers. However, after he and his brother had apparently fallen in love with the same woman, he joined the Green Berets for his brother's sake. I guess he wanted to give him a sporting chance. In 1970, him and his squad were sent out to investigate a secret Soviet missile base when they were ambushed by the CIA's rogue Fox unit, which took over the base. They killed almost everyone on the squad and took Roy Campbell as a prisoner, who had only received a broken leg in the skirmish. The rest is pretty much the plot to Portable Ops, which I'm not going to spoil for noobs. After the plot of Portable Ops, Foxhound was officially established with Campbell as a tactician and executive officer. This goes into vague time, but in the late 80s, Roy Campbell apparently had an affair with his brother's wife, which is still totally not cool at all. Both Roy and his brother Matt weren't aware for some time that Meryl was actually Roy's daughter and not Matt's, though Roy and Meryl were always very close. Matt Campbell died during the Gulf War, and at some point, Roy got married. After the plot of Metal Gear 1 on the MSX, Campbell was appointed commander of Foxhound, added his personal touch to the way the unit handled itself, and got some awards in the process. In December of 1999, Campbell enlisted former Foxhound agent Solid Snake for Operation Intrude F-014. This is where they're in Zanzibar. Colonel Campbell is the only other person besides Solid Snake himself that knows that Snake killed Big Boss while he was there. After that, he retired from Foxhound, and this game happened. Personality-wise, they make Roy Campbell seem like another typical old commander type. But this entire game, it's suspected that he has other objectives. He has joking moments, but almost everything he does here comes off as straight-up commander. Later games portray him as a bigger romantic and give him some more humorous moments than he has here. His only real complexity comes from his relationship to Solid Snake and Meryl, though the latter is done rather passively. Colonel Campbell is voiced by Paul Aiding in English, originally under the alias Paul Otis, and Takashi Oeno in Japanese. This is for all the games Colonel Campbell has appeared in, except for his younger self in Portable Ops. From what I've heard, Takashi Aono isn't bad, but it isn't anything spectacular. He just sounds like an old man in the original game. Keep in mind, though, there may be subtleties that escape the language barrier that exists. People have said that Paul Aiding turned in a really bad performance for the reshoot of Twin the Snakes, but I think it's more of a direction thing. He did get into scenes a little better in the original game, but I noticed that in both Guns of the Patriots and in Twin Snakes, he turned in a rather subdued performance. This leads me to believe they wanted him to sound this low-key, especially when I hear a few other roles he's played, and he does very well. Paul Aiding turns in a good performance, but even I will admit the performance in the original game was more engaging. Other roles that Paul Aiding are known for are, are the Judaker Alderus in StarCraft, and Max Tennyson in the various Ben 10 series. Takashi Aono, who sadly passed away earlier this year, 
has voiced Jean Pachi Mishima in Tekken 5, Dakuan in Ninja Scroll, and Rihaku in The Fist of the North Star. Colonel Campbell has appeared in eight games. Okay, well, with Naomi Hunter, I can't exactly tell you her backstory because it's basically told in its entirety in this game. So I'll instead talk about her personality and the bit of an issue with her accent. A lot of people seem to like Naomi, but I've always thought she was kind of a bitch who randomly talks about subjects she feels other people need to learn when her previous tactics for learning these turned out to be kind of stupid. As for her accent, the original backstory was that she was raised in South Africa, the accent of which isn't too far off from an English accent. However, the only way to confirm this was to find an off-the-beaten-path guide not already included with the game. Presumably, they decided to remove the accents from her and Mei Ling so that they don't distract too much by creating too many questions with incredibly roundabout answers. In Japanese, Naomi was voiced by Hiromi Suru, whose performance sounds good, but for some reason, she just doesn't do anything for me. Again, I think this is something with the language barrier, so you can look up clips and judge for yourself. Other roles Hiromi Suru are well known for are Bulma from Dragon Ball, Ukyo Konji in Ranma 1 half, Madoka Ayukawa in Kimagure Orange Road, and Raiki Mikami in Ghost Sweeper Mikami. And yes, it seems as though she's primarily an anime actress. In English, Naomi is voiced by Jennifer Hale, originally under the alias Karen Learning, who is a very good voice actor and does a good job here and in the original game while also faking an accent. I've never been able to appreciate her work that well in this series, though, because of the problems I've already mentioned with the character herself. But the moments I thought she shined were in Act 2 of Guns of the Patriots, where Hale shows a great bit of range considering how all over the place Naomi was in that chapter. This is where I talk about other work that Jennifer Hale has been in, but Jesus, she's worked on so many different series and done so well in so many of them, it's hard to know where to start. Most of you will probably know her best, though, as the voice of female Commander Shepard in the Mass Effect games. Okay, well, I don't, because I haven't played the games yet, but that little detail will probably lead me to play as Fem Shep once I actually get the games. I know her more as the current voice of Phoenix in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and the voice of Miss Marvel in the ongoing Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, which is an awesome show, by the way. Other noteworthy ones to me include Emma Emmerich in Sons of Liberty, again, really impressive range, Samus Aran in the Metroid Prime games, Avatar Kiyoshi in Avatar The Last Airbender, Alexandra Roivis in Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem, and I'll mention this last one because I have a soft spot for this character, Black Cat in the 90s Spider-Man cartoon and the 2000s Spider-Man video game. Wait, I'm supposed to be talking about Naomi Hunter, right? Naomi Hunter has appeared in three games. Mei grew up with apparently very well-read parents because they somehow led her to become someone who is very well-versed in a ton of literature, from Shakespeare to Chinese proverbs, which in my experience is actually kind of rare among science majors. Apparently she had a love of fighter pilots from watching movies when she was younger and wanted to be one without actually having to kill anybody. After learning that the Air Force needed people to perform battle damage assessments, she majored in aerial photography and air intelligence at MIT, becoming an expert in the field and joining the ROTC. Her heart was then broken by the fact that there are no pilots who do just battle damage assessments, and that her vision was apparently so awful, she failed the aptitude test, so she withdrew from the ROTC programs. She then worked alongside more scientists, and in the process invented some pretty awesome radar and communication systems that Snake is actually using in this mission. And that's about it. She's supposed to be one of the youngest characters in this game, with the only competition being Meryl, who's, again, supposed to be 18. But I somehow doubt Mei Ling learned all this science so damn fast, and other than that, there's really not much to cover. Again, like Naomi, she lost her accent in this remake and every subsequent game. But here's the thing, even if English isn't your first language, that doesn't mean you will have an accent. After all, my first language was technically Spanish, and I communicated with my parents a lot in Spanish, but I don't have an accent because I commonly spoke it to people at school and regularly learned the rules of the language until I became so comfortable that I didn't want to keep using Spanish. That may have seemed a little off topic, but it's my justification for why I always called bullshit on Mei Ling having an accent simply for having Chinese parents in a Chinese neighborhood. 
everyone in the area would have had to have spoken broken English for this to translate to her. Again, this is also kind of an overcomplicated explanation for a prominent detail in her speaking. So, even though this is purely speculation, I'm pretty sure they got rid of the accents just because it's way easier to explain. Personality-wise, she's kind of a Moe character. She has a cute demeanor while also getting a little emotional over certain subjects if you bring them up to her. And that's about as far as her character goes without mentioning the dozens of quotes she has. Mei Ling's Japanese voice actor is Uko Kuishima, and I can't find any videos showing her work in this game, so I can't really comment. If you've heard her performance in this game, and you'd like to know other stuff she worked on, she was Eureka Musimaru in Martian successor Nadesiko, Flay Alstar in Mobile Suit Gundam Seed, and Sango in Inuyasha. Mei Ling's English voice actor is Kim My Guest, originally under the alias Kim Yun in the original game who is very good in this role, but her performance is held back because Mei Ling mainly acts as someone to point out things, so she isn't one to emote very much, and most of the time she does, it's written in a way that's kind of jarring. However, when she is allowed to be a little more expressive in many of the safe quotes, she does shine very well. This is about the same for the original game, except she also had an accent, which a lot of people thought was cute, but I felt it was rather distracting. Other roles Kim My Guest has filled include Isabella Keys in Dead Rising, Dawn Star in Jade Empire, Silver Banshee and Linda Park in Justice League Unlimited, and Katana in Batman Brave and the Bold. Mei Ling has appeared in five games. I don't think I've ever properly introduced Nastasha in any of my walkthroughs, but she's basically there to give you information on any weapons you've picked up as well as random trivia on nuclear materials. Nastasha Romanenko was born and raised in Pripyat, Ukraine, and was about 10 years old during the Chernobyl nuclear power plant meltdown, which wasn't actually too far from where she lived. Her parents helped in the cleanup and died as a result. This made her against nuclear weapons and nuclear power, claiming that nuclear bombings represented an invisible war that transcends borders and generations. Although she was diagnosed with radiation poisoning, she was never diagnosed with cancer, which is also weird considering she's a fucking chain smoker. She later moved to the U.S. and joined the DIA in 1992 and the NSA shortly thereafter. While in the DIA, she met and later married Richard Ames, and somewhat shortly after that, they divorced. Apparently they disagreed on everything. How they got together, I don't know. Sometime after 1996, she joined the Nuclear Emergency Search Team as a military and nuclear analyst living in Los Angeles. When I first started learning about Nastasha's character, I liked her, but the more I thought about her reasons for doing what she's doing, the less sense they made. For example, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant meltdown was more of a result of absolutely terrible maintenance and poorly trained operators rather than a straight-up declaration of war. And yeah, there are more flaws to the industry, but it isn't the fucking devil's work she makes it sound like. And also, how does a power plant meltdown di connect directly to nuclear weapons? They may have the same material, but that doesn't mean that they have the same end goal. It's like hating gas because they're both in cars and fighter jets. Even just a quote of an invisible war that transcends borders and generations annoys me too. Would it be any better if the people in Hiroshima were gunned down or sliced open with knives? And since we've discovered that nuclear-affected areas take too long to become sustainable, there's too much to lose in a nuclear war that people actually think for peace before risking certain death. Eh, enough about personal beliefs and logical errors. My point is that her views on nuclear materials are pretty much her entire character, and there's not much to her besides that. Nastasha's voice actress in Japanese is Aeko Yamada, and I also couldn't find any clips of her either. But I think it fit the character better to have her speaking with a heavy accent that makes sense with the character's background. And usually you don't hear that in Japanese dubbed with European characters. In English, Nastasha's voice actress is Renee Raudman, originally under the alias Renee Colette, who does a very good job at bringing out the emotions that Nastasha is feeling in these various cutscenes, and her performance is a big part of why I did like her character at first. Sadly, her resume isn't particularly wide, as the only other big voice she's done is Miss Butterbean in The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, though apparently she's recorded over 30 audiobooks and has appeared on camera on several different shows. Nastasha Romanenko has only appeared in the original Metal Gear Solid and this remake. 
Finishing off this group of supporting characters is Hal Emmerich, and like Naomi, there's not much I can talk about that doesn't go into spoiler territory. I'll just say that he has several PhDs, Masters, and Bachelor's degrees before this game. Which I find rather odd, because in this game he's only 25 years old. I know there's a lot of overlapping classes in various engineering courses, but still, I thought he was in his mid-30s before looking this up. Emmerich always came off as a little too sensitive in this game, and especially in Guns of the Patriots. But he's still a likable character in a geeky kind of way. I thought he was the most sympathetic in Sons of Liberty because he had something he could take personal responsibility for, even if it went into incredibly creepy territory. Hal Emmerich in Japanese is voiced by Hideyuki Tanaka, and in English by Christopher Randolph, who was originally under the alias Christopher Fritz and you could prefer one or the other for different reasons. Christopher Randolph sounds awkward in the way you'd expect Emmerich to sound, but at the same time, he's not quite as consistent with his performance as he should be. While Hideyuki Tanaka sounds like any ordinary guy, which actually helps Emmerich's character when he's surrounded by all these crazy people. Of course, sounding ordinary leads to a performance that's not entirely memorable, especially compared to Christopher Randolph. You can take your pick. Randolph for a more striking yet sloppier performance, or Tanaka for an unremarkable yet effective performance. Christopher Randolph seems to be more of a physical actor than a voice actor because I only found one other role besides Hal Emmerich that he's voiced, and that's Hal Emmerich's dad in Peace Walker. He also writes and directs, but I couldn't find much on that. The other roles Hideyuki Tanaka has played are Tauro Yamada in Dokaben, Terry Man in Iniku Man, and Roberto Hongo in Captain Tsubasa. Hal Emmerich has appeared in four games. You're the Metal Gear Rex chief engineer, Hal Emmerich, right? You know me? I heard about you from Merrill. Oh, so you're here to rescue me? Sorry, but no. There's something that I've got to do first. Oh, well... At least you're not one of them. Hmm. Are you hurt? Both games do the same problem, uh, mate. I'm okay. I just twisted my ankle a little trying to get away. <laughs> they have him well, say he twisted his all. ankle, it's but they make it look about. like his entire knee buckled or something. I need information about Metal Gear. Huh? Metal Gear? Yeah. What's Metal Gear really designed for? It's a mobile TMD. It's designed to shoot down nuclear missiles. Only for defensive purposes, of course. Liar! I already know that Metal Gear is nothing but a nuclear-equipped walking deathmobile. That's a weird way nuclear? to phrase it. What are you talking about? The terrorists are planning to use Metal Gear to launch a nuclear missile. You telling me you didn't know? Aren't they just trying to Fuck use the TMD strong. missile module to launch a disabled nuclear warhead? Wrong. From the beginning, the purpose of this exercise was to test Metal Gear's nuclear launch capability using a dummy nuclear warhead. The terrorists are just continuing the work you started. Uh, no, you're wrong. I heard it directly from your boss, Baker. No. A nuclear missile on Rex? So you really didn't know. No. All the armament was built by a separate department, and the president personally supervised the final assembly with the main unit. President Baker? Yeah. I was never told exactly what they armed Rex with. I only know it's equipped with a Vulcan cannon, a laser, and a rail gun. You know, of all those things, the rail the laser is easily the most advanced. A rail gun, you said? Yeah. It uses magnets to fire bullets at extremely high velocities. Okay, why is it The technology was originally so developed for open? the SDI system and later scrapped. We were successful in miniaturizing it in a joint venture between Arms Tech and Rivermore National Labs. Most actual rail rail guns are Rex's completely right encased, arm. except Metal for Gear's obviously the end. function is to launch nuclear missiles. You sure you're not forgetting something? It's true that Metal Gear has a missile module on his back that can carry up to eight missiles, but... Are you saying it was originally meant to carry nuclear missiles? You know, with all the the 
the, the the weapons they have here. It makes me wonder where yeah, are all the units to all, for think. simple movement. If Metal Gear fired only standard nuclear missiles, then they should already have all the practical data they need. No. Could it be? Dramatic turn. Metal Gear's co-developer, Rivermore National Labs, was working on a new type of nuclear weapon. They were using Nova and NIF laser nuclear fusion testing equipment and supercomputers. So they developed a new type of nuclear weapon in a VR testing lab, huh? Don't forget yes, the human rocket. But you can't use virtual data on a battlefield. They would need actual launch data. These are some of the supercomputers. You can run a crisis on this. If you link these, you can test everything in a virtual environment. But it's all just theoretical. So, this exercise was designed to test the real thing. What did our president do? I always thought this was a little jarring the way he just kind of went there. The terrorists there. launched that thing? No. Damn. Damn. I hate carpet. I'm such a fool. It's all my fault. The truth is, my grandfather was part of the Manhattan Project. You lied. He so suffered that... with the guilt for the rest of his life. Hmm. And my father, he was born on August 6th, 1945. The day of the Hiroshima bomb. God's got a sense of humor, all right. Three generations of Emmerich men. We must have the curse of nuclear weapons written into our DNA. Damn you, passing motorcycle. I used to think that I could use science to help mankind. But in the end, I was the one being used. Using science for peace? That's only an anime. <laughs> uh, when? You mean with the giant mechs that That's kill people? Crying. Pull yourself together. Where is Metal Gear? Where on this base are they keeping it? Rex is in the underground maintenance base. Where's that? North of the communications tower. Where's it's that? it's a long way there. The emergency override system for the detonation code is there too? Yeah. In the base's control room. You'd better hurry. If they were planning a launch from the start, then their ballistic program is probably finished. And since they haven't called for me in a few hours, they must not need me. In other words, they must be ready to launch. Meryl's got the detonation code override keys. We'll link up with her. If we can't override the launch, we'll have to destroy Rex. I'll show you the way. It'll only take three days. On that leg of yours, you'll just slow me down. Ankle you'll need correction. me if you're gonna destroy Rex. I don't need you. I just need your brain. So I'm gonna have to knock you out. I created Rex. It's my right, my duty to destroy him. If you get a chance, try to escape. <laughs> a little, clear, a I'll little. contact you by Kodak. <laughs> How am I supposed to escape from an island? A little light on the, on the pullout camp. Okay. God, that sounded terrible. So what then? I want you to hide somewhere and keep me informed. You know this place well, don't you? Of course I do. And don't worry, I've got this. It's the same stealth technology as the ninja. Foxhound was gonna use them, but with this I'll be fine. Bad leg and all. I think that was a little too Good. obvious because the light is watch after at kind too. of a strange angle. Meryl, the engineer's okay. That's really They're always I okay. Look after we live through Where everything now. Very close. Oh no. Damn, they spotted me. Meryl, what happened? Why this is why I still agree she should have kept her mask off the entire time. Something's wrong. Did you hear something? Wasn't that some kind of music? I only heard what it did in she look like? She... She was wearing the same green uniform as the terrorists. Wait, now that I think about it, when did Otacon say that he saw Meryl? 
If she's disguised as the enemy, you'll have to contact her when she's alone, huh? I don't remember her mentioning There's only it. one place where we can be sure she's by herself. Where's that? Don't be so dense. What the fuck is stopping the guys from using the ladies' Here, restroom anyway? Use this security card. Sure, there'll be no urinals, but what if they have it's to take a shit? security level four. And all the other ones are full. And come on, he's the fucking NG. Shouldn't he have maximum, uh, oh, are you? Huh? uh, you know, range to do anything? You feel okay? Nothing bothering you. Are you coming What's on to me? What's wrong? You get all friendly all of a sudden. No, nothing. I, uh, just glad you're okay. You're strange. <laughs> coming from him. I'm a little nervous. Everyone else I've saved suddenly dies. Your bad luck. Forget it, Doctor. Call me Otakon. Otakon? It stands for Otaku Convention. An otaku is a guy like me who likes Japanimation. I've never- I have not heard that term in a long time. And this is all FMV that just comes in. This is all, I believe, from Japan Zone of the Enders. Japan is the first country to successfully make bipedal robots. They're still the best in the field of robotics. Dude, you can take that last ten Japanese seconds and use that as a fucking they did. Like, infomercial for fucking anime. Nuclear weapons, you know. Even though it's all yeah, from video games. That's what all scientists say. And game designers. I became a scientist because I wanted to make robots like the ones in the Japanese animes. Really, it's true. For Sounds what like practical purpose? To me. Somehow I doubt you would ever build the Ava to You're right. stop we have the to incoming take responsibility. Science has progressed Christ. because there is war. And because of scientists' greed, weapons of mass destruction were born. But that's all over. I won't take part in murder anymore. And then I think about it. How many people have actually died from nuclear warfare? Uh, well, uh, there's the obvious Whatever. ones in two all cities. All I want from you is information. But if you think about sure. it... Sure. I know everything about this whole base. How many people have been saved by them? Ask me anything about them? Rex or about this place. Also, with this stealth camouflage, I can sneak in and out of the armory and mess hall. If you need ammo or rations, just tell me and I'll bring them to you. Bullshit. I'm on frequency 141.12. See you later. And that's why earlier, if I plan things out right, I showed you the bio of all the people on the radio because... Well, this was the last guy. But I think that'll end it off. I could have made an argument f for positive nuclear weapons to counter this one's anti-one. But I think I'll leave this off here because that was quite a bit of cutscenes. So, next time on Let's Play Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, Snake will vomit. See you then. Why, why, God, why is it so hard to actually spin? Saving! Oh, and, and this is bullshit. They don't actually automatically put it in the, uh, in the log. Uh, 141.82, I believe is what he said. Oh my God, why wasn't I paying attention? Shit. Okay, put it in. People who have been through war and survived Shit. develop a kind of sixth Fuck. sense to warn them of danger. Trust your instincts as a soldier, as a gamer. Crap, I got the wrong one. Um, shit. Crap, what, what is it? I know you guys are going to be saying, Carlos, what the fuck is wrong with you? Didn't you didn't you listen to what he was saying? To which I spawned, no! God, shit. Fuck. Oh man, I'm gonna look really stupid. Okay. Go opening up Google Chrome.
Okay, now to actually put it in my database. You still haven't found Meryl? Snake, the Warhead storage building that you're in has one floor above ground and two floors below ground. Why don't you search there, too? <laughs> no. I want to save, but I wanted to have that in there so that I have all the codex. Snake, there's an old Chinese saying. A scholar who cherishes the love of comfort is not fit to be deemed a scholar. Aww. Einstein said it another way. He said that only a life lived for others is worth living. How are those the That's same? That's why I entered MIT instead of CMU or Princeton like my friends. I wanted to do applied physics, not just theoretical stuff. I wanted to make things for people. The Soliton radar system, or the codex system. I just wanted to make something that would be useful for people. I think that it was the same for Dr. Emmerich, too. No, but he just wanted to like a tool. make anime things. to make things. a horrible killing machine. Maybe it would be better if engineers like us just stop making things. I don't know. No, you're wrong. There's at least one person whose life has gotten better as a result of your inventions. Me. Huh? Without the Kodak, I wouldn't be able to talk to you like this. Thanks, Snake. Yes, and I, I hate I hate how people always try to say, "Oh, nuclear weapons it kills everyone uh, aimlessly." Here's the thing: there's very little to gain in actually using nuclear weapons, but there's so much that you can lose if you or yourself are struck. So think about how many people have stopped attacking simply because of that threat. But I'm that's going into politics, so I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>